Chapter 17 A Telltale Cane The old man began to wave the cane at Pam and Holly. Run, he ordered. The girls became frightened. Turning, they began running as fast as they could. Every so often, they would look back to see whether he was coming after them. I don't see him now, Pam said presently. Let's go back. Holly was not sure they should, but followed her sister and they retraced their steps. The old man still stood in the same spot. Didn't I tell you not to come here, he cried. You go get on your boat and leave at once. Pam stood her ground. Why? she asked him bravely. I won't tell you, the old man replied stubbornly. With this, he waved his cane again and came toward the girls. This time, when they turned and ran, he followed them. He could not run as fast as they, but he did not stop. Oh, maybe he'll make Daddy move the boat right away, Holly said fearfully. Then we never can find old Mo or Bobby Reed. Daddy can talk to him better than we can, replied Pam. She turned around to see how close the old man was. At this very second, she saw him trip, wave his arms a moment, and then fall flat. He did not get up. Oh, Holly, he's hurt himself, Pam cried as she stopped running. Holly stopped too, and they hurried back toward the old man who was still lying on the ground. He had a big bump on his forehead. Oh, he hit his head on a stone, Pam said. He's unconscious. We must do something for him. What? Holly asked. Pam looked around. Nearby was a sparkling stream of water. She took a clean handkerchief from her pocket and asked Holly to soak it in the water. Holly did this, and when she returned with it, Pam laid it on the man's forehead. Then she tried some little first aid tricks she had learned, patting his cheeks and rubbing his wrists but he did not regain consciousness. Pam became frightened. We must get mother here at once, she declared. Just as the girls were about to leave, Holly noticed the man's cane. Initials had been burnt into the stick. Pam, look, she said. The initials on this are MT. Do you suppose that could be for Moses Twig? It probably is, Pam agreed excitedly. Come on, we must hurry. The two girls ran all the way back to the tree bridge, climbed up on it, and started for the sweetie pie. Pam began calling loudly, Mother! Mother! Come here quick! Mrs. Hollister hurried from the cabin, as well as the children's father. What's the matter? they asked together. Quickly, Pam explained about the old man. Mrs. Hollister dashed inside the cruiser to get the first aid kit. Then they all started off, including Sue. As they reached the path, Pete and Ricky returned. Upon hearing the story, they decided to go along too. He's just up ahead, cried Pam, who was leading the procession. She turned a curve in the trail and stared in blank astonishment. The old man was gone. He went away, she cried, but where could he go? The Hollisters stood still for several seconds, then decided the old man must have gone to his cabin. They hurried along the trail and several minutes later saw a little log dwelling. Mr. Hollister knocked on the door. There was no answer and after repeated knocking, he opened the door and walked in. Seated in a rocking chair was the white bearded old man. He held his head in his hands and was moaning. Seeing his visitors, he said wearily, Go away, I don't want anybody here. Mrs. Hollister paid no attention. She walked up to him and laid her hand on his shoulder. We've come to help you, she said gently. My daughters tell me you fell and hurt yourself. Yes, I bumped my head, he admitted. It aches badly. Mrs. Hollister opened the first aid kit and started to work. In a short time, she had put lotion on the bruise and bandaged the man's head. Then she got a glass of water and gave him a little tablet. In a few moments, he said he felt better and thanked her. He even smiled warmly. 
I didn't mean to be ungrateful, the old man said. I've lived alone so long, I guess I'm not very polite anymore. Rather abruptly, Pete stepped forward and said to him, Aren't you Moses Twig? The old man gave a start of surprise. That's my name, but how did you know it? I've kept it a secret for many, many years. Pete told about the clownfish he had caught up in Shoreham, and how many people were puzzled about the strange tags on the fish's tails. When the old man heard this, he smiled. These fish are my pets, he said. By crossbreeding, I've developed what you call the clownfish, which I hope many sportsmen will enjoy catching. A few of them, which I had tagged, got away from me. Did you bump into our boat about four o'clock this morning? Pete asked him. Yes, I have an ancient rowboat hidden among the trees. I was trying to find out about you folks. The children explained how they had put their clues together to guess that the old man was Moses Twig. But the funniest thing of all, Ricky piped up, is about your money in the bank. Old Mo looked up in amazement. Money in the bank? Yes, Pete continued. You left your money there a long time ago. Mr. Fender's looking for you. He wants to give it to you before the 20 years are up. The old man was so taken aback by this announcement that he buried his bushy face in his hands, saying his memory had not been good since he had grown older. Please don't cry, Mr. Snowbeard, Sue said, as she went up to him and put her hand on his shoulder. The old man looked up, brushed away a tear, and smiled at the little girl. If you want, he said, you may call me old Mo. Everybody used to call me that. Sighing, he added, I suppose I ought to have someone to take care of me. Maybe you will, Holly said. Do you know that you have a great grandson who's looking for you? I certainly don't. Why, that's splendid. Where is he? We don't know. He was in Shoreham, but he ran away. The old man hung his head in disappointment as Pam took up the story. She told how the boy's mother had come from the West to look for Moses Twig, but had discovered that he had disappeared many years before. Now she was heartbroken because her son was gone too. Tell me, said old Mo, what is the name of my grandson and how old is he? The children were amazed at his question, but they suddenly realized that he had not even known of his granddaughter's marriage. He's 10 years old and his name's Bobby Reed, Pete spoke up. Bobby Reed, old Mo shouted, suddenly getting his strength back. Bobby Reed, he jumped from the chair. Come here, he ordered and led the way to a door leading to another room.